welcome to the Temple Heights Baptist Church. And this is our midweek service, and we pray that we can be a blessing to you and an encouragement to your hearts. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings on what we're going to do here. We pray that your fresh blessings will be upon us. We pray that souls will be saved and that others will be encouraged and drawn closer to you. Lord, may those that are discouraged be encouraged. And we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to begin by singing praises unto the Lord Jesus Christ, who is worthy of all praise. 521 redeemed stanzas number one, three, and four. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And since we've been bought, we belong to him. Amen? Amen? Let's sing another song of praise, number 588. Number 588 in your hymn books. We have come into his house. We're going to sing both stanzas. Jesus Christ, who is worthy of all of our praise. Amen? Amen. I'd like you to open your Bibles, if you have them at hand. We're studying the second book of Chronicles, the very beginning of it. But before we get into it, I have one verse in 1 Chronicles I'd like to read as part of the scripture reading. It's found in 1 Chronicles 28 verse 5, and that will lead us into the scripture reading of for Second Chronicles. First Chronicles 28 and verse 5. The word of God reads here in reference to Solomon. 
And of all my sons, for God the Lord hath given me many sons, he chose Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. Now if you would open your Bibles to first, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, the first chapter, Second Chronicles, the first chapter, verses 6 through 13. Second Chronicles, number first, chapter 1, 6 through 13. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. And in that night did God appear unto Solomon, and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto the Lord, Thou hast showed great mercy upon David my father, and hath made me to reign in his stead. Now, O my Lord God, let thy promise upon David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge, that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? And God said unto Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hath asked long life, but hath asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any have after thee have like the like. Then Solomon came from this journey to the high place that was in Gibeon to Jerusalem, from before the tabernacle of the congregation, and reigned over Israel. Let's pray. Lord, I ask your blessings. I cannot attempt to do anything of eternal value without your leading. I don't even want to attempt. And Lord, I pray that you would work in me in these next moments and through me. May my thoughts be ordered. May my words also be uh, given forth in such a way that the word of God is preached and taught in a plain fashion, that people will understand clearly, not me, Lord, but your message to their hearts. I've asked this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. We study the lives of many of the champions of faith of the Old Testament, and we're looking at Solomon now, David. David has passed away. Solomon was chosen by God from the sons of David to be king over Israel. We read that in 1 Chronicles 28, 5. By the way, there were other brothers that were perhaps more capable than Solomon. But God chose Solomon. That shows the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Solomon was humbled before God. And as we read this portion that we, in chapter one, Solomon humbled before God, asked the Lord for wisdom and knowledge. The Lord asked, ask what you would and it will be given thee. And uh, God was pleased with what he asked. And, and he asked wisdom and knowledge in order to judge and reign over the people. And this truly pleased God. If you look at verse 10, notice what Solomon says to God. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? And then, and then we find here, this really pleased the Lord. In verse 11, 
And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart. I want, I want to make emphasis there. We've seen this from David's time forward. God looks at our hearts. Amen. And here God is looking inside the heart of Solomon at that moment. And he saw that he was honoring God with humility. And God said, because this was in thine heart and thou hast not asked riches, wealth or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hath asked long life, but hath asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself that thou mayest judge thy pe my people over whom I have made thee king. And so God reinstates it in verse 12. Look at verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee. Now notice this. This is extra. I will grant unto thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. And so God honored his petition. God grants him his prayer because God saw what was in his heart. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, this really uh, re resounded with me when I was reading this and studying and praying over it. God sees our hearts. And God sees your heart right now as you're listening to me. And God sees my heart right now as I'm proclaiming the word. Now, let me ask you this. What is in your heart today? What is in your heart today? Now, from the abundance, we know that in other scriptures, it says, from the abundance of the heart speaketh the mouth. You see a lot of people out there speaking foul language all the time. What does that tell me? They have a foul heart. Amen. Amen. There's something wrong with their heart. It's not up here. It's from here. It's a heart problem. Amen. Amen. And, and, and even out of, our, out of our mouth proceedeth all these things, the attitudes and so forth that we have. We have a heart problem. We need to look at the Lord. Lord, how can I fix this? Maybe we need to go to the chief cardiac Amen. and have him fix our heart problem. Amen. Amen. Our spiritual problem. God also gave him, as we just read, riches and wealth and honor more than any other after him. Now, as we jump forward, and we're going to be going forward quite a bit now, I'm going to try to cover at least seven chapters in 20 minutes. You say, how are you going to do that? Well, jump to chapter three. <laughs> jump to chapter three, verses one and two. And here we find Solomon begins to build the house of God, the temple in Jerusalem. And we find that perhaps the most outstanding thing that Solomon did in his reign was to build the temple. That's the most outstanding thing. Although he wrote, he's attributed to writing Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and the Song of Solomon, these books of poetry and the scriptures. But the most outstanding thing in his life was to build the temple in Jerusalem. And it says here in chapter 3 and verse 1 and 2, Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared unto David his father, in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Orna, of, uh, of the Jebusite. And he began to build in the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. It even tells us when he began to build it. He began to build it the fourth year after he began to reign over Jerusalem. Now, when he builds it, this was really brought out in my studies. He built it with splendor. The house of God was built with splendor. There was nothing left out. There was nothing cheap. There was nothing secondhand. It was first class all the way. Notice in verse 4, just to give you a few verses, we're not going to read all of them. Verse 4, 
and the porch that was on the front of the house. The length of it was according to the breadth of the house, 20 cubits, and the height was 120. And he overlaid it, this really st stuck out in my mind, he overlaid it within with pure gold. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if any of us here or if any of us listening has seen anything of pure gold. We have jewelry that has gold in it, but pure gold. This was built with pure gold. Notice verse 6. Jump down to verse 6. And he garnished the house. In other words, it was everywhere. It was everywhere. He garnished the house with precious stones of beauty. And, and the gold was gold of parvium. Parvium. It must have been a very uh, expensive, very exquisite type of gold. Look at verse 7 uh, all the way through verse 10. He overlaid also the house, the beams, the post, and the walls thereof, and the doors thereof, with gold, and engraved cherubims on the walls. And he made the most holy house, the length thereof, was according to the breadth of the house, 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof, 20 cubits, and he overlaid it with fine gold, amounting to 600 talents. You know, I, I started looking at that, talents. We don't understand that. Uh, it's a, a, a measure of weight that they had in the olden times. But I looked it up, and a talent uh, was a measurement that they used for gold and silver. And a talent, listen to this, it blew my mind. One talent was 75 pounds. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? 75 pounds. And here he has all of this gold with 600 talents. 600 talents. One talent was 75 pounds of gold. So you can imagine the lavishness of the temple. Look at verse 9. And the weight of the nails was 50 shekels. That's another, another measurement of gold. And it was measured in gold. And he overlaid the upper chambers with gold. And verse 10. And the most holy house, he made two cherubims of image work and overlaid them with gold. The, the temple was made with splendor. You know what that tells me? We need to give and do the best we have for the Lord. Amen. Don't, don't be second class when it comes to serving the Lord. Don't be second class when, whenever we're going to do something for the Lord. Do it with all your might. Amen. Do it with all your knowledge and all of your wisdom. God is worthy of our very best. Amen. Amen of our very best. Now, the, the Bible tells us, and we're going to jump forward again here now, if you look in chapter 5 and verse 1, we're going very rapidly now. I just might make it in 20 minutes, okay? Chapter 5 and verse 1. Here we find that Solomon finished building the house of God. It says here in verse chapter 5, verse 1, Thus all the work that Solomon made was for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated, and the silver and the gold and all the instruments, and put them among the treasures of the house of God. So the work was finished. Then he brought all of the things that his father had put apart and dedicated them inside the temple among the treasures of the house of God. And then it says here, as we look in verse 2, uh, in, in, in the same chapter, 2 Chronicles 5, 2, the ark of God is then brought to the temple in order, and is brought with order, reverence, and honor. We find here in verse 2, then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes and the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel unto Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord 
out of the city of David, which is Sion. And look at, uh, look at verse 5 now. And they brought up the ark and the tabernacle of the congregation and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. These did the priest and the Levites bring up. So it was a procession. It was all synchronized. It was planned. It was done in an orderly fashion. And you know what that tells me, folks? God is a God of order. Amen. And he wants things done in order in his house. He wants things done in order in his worship. And whatever we do for the Lord, we need to do with order. Amen? Amen. And we find here in verse uh, 10 and 11, here they are bringing the ark. They're bringing it out of the tabernacle, which was just outside of Jerusalem. And they're bringing it now and placing it in the temple, which was lavishly built for the honor and glory of the Lord. In verse 10 and 11 now, verse 10 and 11, there was nothing in the ark save the two tablets which Moses put therein at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel, when he, they came out of Egypt. Now look at verse 11. Very interesting. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified. Now the word sanctified there means they were set apart. They were set apart. Does it mean they were, they were perfect? No. There's no one perfect. The only perfect one is God himself. Amen. And in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he's our savior. But these uh, holy men, the Levites and all of the priests, they prayed. They, they had prayed up and they did all that they were supposed to do. To be set apart, to do, to set the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant in the temple. Now notice here, as we go to verse 13, as they are coming from outside of Jerusalem, inside Jerusalem where the temple is built and placing the ark to place it in the place of the Holy of Holies, we find here in verse 13, and it, it came even to pass as the trumpeters and the singers were as one, and made one sound to, the, uh, to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And, and then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. You know, uh, I find here music with instruments and we learned that before it wasn't just uh, sound it was orchestrated it was uh, harmonious and it was music praising and thanking and lifting up the name of the lord and they even said here the words that they were saying for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. And so God was pleased with this. How do I know this? Well, as we look at uh, verse 14, look at verse 14, God filled the house with his presence. Verse 14, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Amen. Folks, I don't know about you, but I think that would be an awesome experience, amen? amen? To feel the presence of the Lord so vividly that you could, couldn't even do anything, amen? The presence of God was there. Now, we find here, and I, 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 I brought this conclusion, there is power in true and genuine worship unto the Lord. Amen. When we worship the Lord the way the Bible says, when we do things the way God has designated in the scriptures and how he gives examples, 
uh, we will see and experience also the true power of God in our churches. Amen? Isn't that what we're looking for? We need the true worship. You know, I, I look at a lot of churches today and, and uh, there's a lot of discrepancy about what music should be played and what music should not. I say this, music for the Lord should be reverent, but it should be joyful and it should be harmonious. It should not override the words of the people. We need to give praises unto the Lord. Notice the words that they are saying before the Lord in unison, everyone together. And so the uh, power, there's power when we genuinely worship and honor and praise the Lord the way he wants. And I don't know about you, but I want to experience that in my ministry. Amen? Amen. So the ark of God is placed in the temple and Solomon finally stands before it and he begins to pray. Let's jump forward to chapter 6 and verse 3. Chapter 6 and verse 3. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel and all the congregation of Israel stood. Now, uh, I was brought this to my attention. Sometimes when we come to worship, we don't stand. There are times which we need to stand. Amen? Amen. Here they all are all together. And here all of a sudden, as he faces them and he's going to praise the Lord, they all stand. Maybe we need to incorporate that on occasions in our worship. When we read the word of God, for example, everyone should stand in reverence to the Lord. Amen? Amen. When we uh, honor the Lord and, and bring praise unto his name, maybe all should stand uh, uh, every now and then. Amen? Amen? We find that in the scriptures. And all of the congregation of Israel stood. I would like you to jump down to verse 11 and 12 now in the same chapter. And in and in it take, I put the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the children of Israel. And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all of the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands. Now what's Solomon going to do when he spreads his hands? He's going to pray. He's going to pray. And so he begins to pray. And he kneels down before all of the congregation of Israel. I believe this is an act of humility of the king before all of Israel. Give him an example. Amen? Amen. And he spreads forth his hands before them. And he begins to pray. Verse 14. And said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the earth, nor in the earth, which keepeth covenant and showeth mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all thy hearts. Thou which hath kept with thy servant David, my father, that which thou hast promised him, and speaketh with thy mouth, and hath fulfilled in thy heart as it is this day. And uh, he goes on and we'll jump to verse 21 now. He's continuing in his prayer. And he's saying this, Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant. He's speaking of himself and of thy people Israel, which they have made toward, make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven. And when thou hearest, now notice this, forgive. And, and uh, look at verse 25 through 28. Then hear thou from the heavens and forgive the sins of thy people Israel and bring them again onto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. When the heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee, yet if they pray towards this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sins when thou dost afflict them. Then hear thou from heaven, and forgive the sins of thy servant, and of thy people Israel, when thou hast taught them the good way, wherein they should walk, and send rain upon the land, 
which thou hast given unto the people for an inheritance. Verse 28, and if there be dearth in the land, or if there be pestilence, doesn't that sound familiar? COVID-19, if there be blasting, or mildew, or locusts, or caterpillars, if their enemies beseech them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there is. So he's saying, Lord God, hear our prayers that when our people are in distress, and if even if we have a pestilence, may we look unto thee because you are in charge of everything. You know, I, I believe that and I reached this conclusion, I believe God has permitted COVID-19 over all of the world because he's trying to get the whole world's attention. God is revealing himself over all of these false gods in many countries and in many religions that he alone is God of heaven and earth. Amen. And he is the one in charge. Amen. And you don't hear people talking about if they're praying to their gods, Buddha or, or in Hinduism or whatnot. We pray to God. God is the only one who can relieve us of this problem that we're going through right now. And God is permitting this so that the whole world will look towards him. If we look at, in the same chapter, verse 32 and 33, I found these two verses. Moreover, concerning the stranger, in other words, a person that's not a Hebrew, if there's someone among the people that's not Hebrew, from a, a strange land or another country, which is not of thy people Israel, but is come from a far country, for thy great name's sake, and thy mighty hand and thy stretched out arm, if they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, even from the dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee, for that all people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee as thus this people of Israel, and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. Amen. You know, God is Lord of all nations. Amen. And he wants everyone in every nation to come and bow down to him. Amen. He is the maker. He is the creator. He is the one that gave life. We are to honor him and bow down to him. Our God, Lord, Jehovah. Amen. Amen. And did you know that Jehovah means I am that I am? Amen. That's exactly who Jesus said who he was. Amen? Amen. I am that I am. So we find here that God is the Lord of all nations in the whole world. And God manifested himself as a result of Solomon's prayer. If we jump down to chapter 7. Hey, we're going to make it, folks. Chapter 7 and verse 1. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, we don't know how long he prayed, but after he prayed, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifice sacrifices and the glory of God filled the house. And if we look, uh, we look here, uh, I, I got this conclusion, folks. Not only does God reveal himself in true worship and praise, but he reveals himself after God's people pray. Amen. Pray humbly to him. God reveals himself. And we find here, as it goes on in, in verse uh, verse. Uh, three and following look at verse three and when all the children of israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the lord upon the house they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the lord saying for he is good 
for his mercies endureth forever. And I believe that's what God's trying to do today. He's trying to get the attention of people with this COVID-19. And if we don't get his attention, folks, you know what God's going to do? He's going to do something else. Amen. And he's going to continue to do it. Amen. He's giving people opportunity to come to him, to, to kneel before him, the giver of life itself, and the, uh, the one that originated eternal salvation. He's giving everyone an opportunity. And we find here, there is no power outside of prayer and, and humbling ourselves uh, as a righteous person. You know what righteousness is? God, it's not, we're not righteous in ourselves. There is none righteous, no, not one in ourselves. But God justifies us. You know what justifying means? God counts you righteous. Amen. Even though you're not righteous. Amen. That's what we are. We're justified. God proclaims you justified. Not in ourselves, but in whom? Amen. In his son, Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the solution for the world today. God's solution for the world is found even in this chapter. And as Solomon continues to pray, and notice, I, I, you know, it wasn't just a day thing or an hour. Did you know that those festivities lasted for over two weeks? Over two weeks. If I were to tell people, we're going to have church every day this week, I think people would frown. I remember the day back when I was young where we'd have a whole week uh, revival and people would come. You put a week's revival today, I don't know if they'll can make it, right? Our schedule, we have to schedule time for the Lord. God help us. Amen? Amen. God help us. And then uh, as uh, Solomon finishes up his praying and the festivities, and we find here in, in uh, verse 11 and following. Notice verse 11. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make the house of the Lord and his own house he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. Now this is the second time. Did you know that God appeared to Solomon twice? In the beginning of his ministry, when he prayed for, uh, for wisdom and knowledge, God granted him that. And here God appears for him the second time. Only two times did God appear unto Solomon. And it says here, verse 12, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself. For an house of sacrifice. And he says here. And uh, uh, verse 13 and 14. If I shut up heaven. That there be no rain. And if I command the locusts to devour the land. And if I send pestilence. Unto my people. Again pestilence. Isn't that what we're experiencing? Amen. A pandemic. And then it says here. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Now, I want to make this clear. A lot of people are proclaiming those verses, and rightfully so. We need to proclaim those verses. That America uh, be brought back to the Lord and the world come to the Lord. But you know what? God is dealing with his people. The solution for the world is found in the hearts of God's people. Amen. We, the people of God that have trusted in him, we need to call upon his name. You say, well, I call upon him to be saved. You need to call upon him for revival, Amen. renewal. Amen. That's what we need. And it says here, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray and seek my face 
and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and I will heal their land. God's people need to reverence him. We need to look introspectively at ourselves. What am I doing wrong? I as a preacher, what am I as a preacher doing wrong? What are you as a church member doing wrong? What are you as a church leader doing wrong? Everyone here needs to get closer to the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. God's people made reference and honor the Lord and God will heal the land. This is God's solution for the world today. This is what we need. We need to turn our hearts to God. What happened in the Great Awakening in the United States right after the uh, revolution uh, from England when we came free, the 13 colonies? There was a Great Awakening. The people turned to God. Amen. People turned to God and great preachers arose. And there were preachers that sometimes didn't even know hardly how to preach. They read their messages. And God was so moved upon them that people by the droves were saved. They came to the Lord. That's what we need today. The problem is not in the world. The problem is in God's people. Amen. In God's people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity of bringing forth your message your word, proclaiming it. I pray that it would go out with power of the Holy Spirit. Even now as I preach and pray, Lord, that you would be mending hearts, convicting spirits of people to draw to you, to humble themselves. Father, there, we need to get our lives straight. We need to be more than just Sunday-only Christians. We need to be involved in the Lord's work. We need to be hungry to see souls saved. Lord, we need to get our lives straight. Lord, bless us. Help us to put into practice what you spoke to Solomon that night when you came to him. Father, may 2 Corinthians seven fourteen be the verse that is upon our hearts and minds. May we humble ourselves and seek your face and Lord turn from our wicked ways and pray and, 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 and then we will hear from heaven and then you will heal the land. Lord heal our churches. Heal our, our churches that are so worldly that, that, all their, that we have more of the world in the churches now than outside of the world sometimes. Lord help us to show forth the light of Christ. Father, if there's anyone here that listening, that still has not called upon you as Lord and Savior, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. If I'm speaking to you, would you call upon Jesus to be Lord of your life? I know you've heard about Jesus. I know you've heard about the Lord. But your life doesn't show anything. The walk of your life shows if they were to put you with a lot of worldly people, you would be just the same. May God help us. May God help us to be different, to stand out. If you're not that, would you pray this prayer with me? Lord God, I need you. This moment, this hour, I recognize my life is void and empty. And I look at the world right now and I don't know where to turn. So right now, I call upon Jesus the Son of the living God to be my personal 
Lord and Savior, save me by your grace. Help me to walk in your ways. From this day forth, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. I hope you made a decision in your heart. I hope you heard something today that can really help you to get closer to the Lord. As we look at the world around us, we don't find answers in the world, but we do find answers in God's word. Amen. He has the answers. I pray that you as a Christian would become more fervent in your local churches when this is all over. Seek opportunities to gather together in, as a church body. Get involved in your church. Don't be a lump on the log like you were before. Be something, uh, a servant uh, that, that will be a channel of blessing for others. Amen? Amen? I pray that you'll make that decision in your heart. And if you accepted Christ as your Savior, we want to rejoice with you. Would you call us Temple Heights Baptist Church, area code 813-985-985. 5292. Again, Temple Heights Baptist Church, 813 985 5292. If you would like to send your contributions or, or tithes and offerings, you haven't been able to do that because of the quarantine, you can do that. P.O. Box 290. 392. I will repeat, P.O. Box 290392, Tampa, Florida, Temple Heights Baptist Church, zip code 33687. 33687. I'd like to announce also that this Sunday coming, uh, we're going to have our first service in perhaps over two and a half months, and we're opening the doors at 1030. We will be have a unified service in English and in Spanish. We will follow the CDC guidelines, so we're going to be very strict on that, distancing and everything else. If you wish, uh, if you are high risk and are not feeling well for some reason or other, Please stay home. You don't have to be here. Our services will be transmitted, as we're doing now, on YouTube and on Facebook for your convenience. But welcome to Temple Heights. We're going to be here Sunday morning for the first time in a long time. And uh, we advise you to come with your heart open to worship the Lord Jesus Christ and, uh, and to greet people from afar. We're no... No greetings and no handshakings and so forth. We're going to do say hello from afar off. Hey, how you doing? And so forth. And uh, But we're going to have a good time in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 1030. 1030. Hope to see you here. God bless you. Stay safe. Be victorious in Jesus.